Hey y'all, it's Crystal. Welcome back to the channel. It's that time of the week. Time for the weekly update where I chat about what I got into last week as far as my reading goes. I hope that you had a nice week. I had a pretty good week. Definitely some good reading happened. And this morning we woke up to some snow, so um, we don't get it very often where I live here in North Carolina, so we took advantage. We've been, already been out sledding and playing out in the snow this morning. My kiddo loved it, so that was fun. So yeah, it's a Saturday, so we're just gonna, you know, take it easy like we normally do. But let's just jump right into what I got into last week, what I finished up, and what I've got progress all that good stuff so first up let's talk about the hay bale by Priscilla Bettis this was phenomenal and I loved it so <laughs> I think a lot of us know Priscilla we always see her in the comments she's very supportive of everyone here on booktube and she has put out a, uh, a piece of short pit of short fiction called The Hay Bell. And this is a story, gosh, let me tell you a little bit about what's going Okay, so we have a woman named Claire. <laughs> she has had several miscarriages, a failed adoption attempt, and now she's separated from her husband. So for the summer, she's decided to kind of, you know, get away for a bit She's rented this sort of old plantation home up in the Virginia mountains. She's like, you know, take a break. Let me kind of reset, regroup, get my mind together. She wants to try for another adoption. So, you know, just, you know, just have some quiet. And like I said, kind of regroup, right? Well, she gets there. Immediately she hears something in the walls. She's like, oh, this is an old house. Gosh, is there like a, you know, a mouse in the wall or something? So she's kind of like, ooh, a little weirded out. So she kind of goes out to the back of the house. And like I said, this is an old plantation house. So there's lots of land still associated with it, even though it's been broken up over time. But And she sees like this lone bay hill out there in the back. And she's like, oh, that's kind of weird to just see, to just see one, you know. She's like, eh, but whatever. She goes and checks it out. And she's like, this hay bale doesn't actually look very healthy because she's a microbiologist and the center of it's looking a little, looking a little, you know, uh, gunky and gooey. And she's like, oh, this hay looks like it was rolled up wet. I better let the farmer know because there's just, there's some bacteria growing in here. This is not going to be good healthy hay to use, right? Well, it turns out that the local folks know all about this hay bale and, um, There's something, uh, there's something strange about the hay bale. Uh, that's what I'm going to say about that. <laughs> and let me tell you, this story was so good. Priscilla just captured this phenomenon. It, the, the grief, of course, that Claire's going through, the grief, the loss. I mean, I think this is really a story about that. Um, and then, you know, get this folklore, you know, tinges with the, uh, What's going on with this hay bale? What's going on with the local folks? She sets the scene perfectly, gives us a, a perfect amount of spookiness, perfect amount of emotion. The characters are great. Um, if anything, if I could criticize this at all, it'd be that I want more. <laughs> I would have loved to have more background about um, about this this neighborhood, you know, this little town or whatever, and the more about the history of everything. Because, yeah, I could have definitely gobbled up more. So, Priscilla Bettis did an amazing job. I can't recommend this enough. You can grab it on Amazon. Um, it's like 40-ish pages. You'll fly through it. It's amazing. I cannot wait to see what Priscilla has in store for us in the future. Because I'm telling you, if this is any indication, I'm going to love it. So, I, was, I loved that story. The Hay Bell by Priscilla Bettis. Fantastic. So what was next? Let's see. Oh, I finished my poetry collection. Where did I put that? 
All the Pretty Ones by Anne Sexton. This was my sort of poetry collection for January that I was making my way through. And um, I did finish it. I did do a little Poetry Thursday video on it. I talked a little bit about the collection and then I read one of the poems. Um, I'd love for you to check that out if you're interested. Um, I was a little nervous doing a reading, but um, it was fun. So I loved this collection. It was amazing. Anne Sexton is awesome. So <laughs> I won't say too much because I, I do have that other video, but I enjoyed it. All right. What was next? Yes, this. I did finally finish The Watchmaker of Filigree Street by Natasha Pulley. And, ooh, I ended up not really liking this. <laughs> this, this um, as what do we say around here? This was not for me. Mm, yeah, I ended up being just absolutely bored with this story. Ooh, I hate saying that, but, ooh, I just, I, I just kept going kind of like, I mean, what is, what is the point of everything, you know? Because, <laughs> you know, we got this main character named Nathaniel who, like, this pocket watch is mysteriously placed on his pillow and, um, he, he, you know, he gets kind of wrapped up in, like, this bomb that goes off and then, like, gets, you know, connected with the watchmaker of that fancy watch, Mr. Mori, who's a Japanese guy living in, living in London. I don't know, you guys. I, I just, I don't know. It was, it was definitely slow. And I don't mind a slow story. I really don't. Um, but I need something to like keep me going. Like, I didn't really feel connected to Thaniel. I didn't really feel connected to Mr. Mori. I didn't really feel connected to the other character here. Was his name Grace? What's her name? Grace, I think. So I don't even remember what her name is. Yeah. <laughs> so. I don't know. So I'm sure some people would love this. Um, I did not. But it's for book club. So I always try to finish for book club picks, but um, oof, struggled with that one. <laughs> so if you, you know, set in like the 1880s, so it's, you know, if you like that sort of time period, you don't mind a slow story. Maybe you'd like it. You know. Whatever. Okay. <laughs> then I finished Stolen Tongues by Felix Blackwell. This was for Kelsey over at Slime and Slashers. She's got, you know, her uh, book club that she started this year. And this is one of the choices for January. And I ended up with very mixed feelings about this one. On the one hand, it's extremely scary. Um, I, I it actually did very much scare me at times. So that the gist of it is we've got this guy named Felix. Insert eye roll here, but never mind. That's the author's name too. Anyway, this guy named Felix and his fiance Faye. They are, you know, in their sort of early mid twenties. They're they're busy, they're working, and Felix is like a grad student, you know, they don't always have a lot of time, but they decide to take a week off and um, go away to this little cabin that her parents own up in the Colorado mountains. Well, let's, let's take a week, you know, get away and all that kind of stuff. It's, it's set in the winter time, so it's perfect time to read it right now. And um, so yeah, that's what they do. So they go up there. And then, shit hitteth the fan and they start hearing like noises outside they start hearing voices outside and all kinds of different voices from little children to women to men all kinds of different things and they see like shadows walking you know walking in front of a window you know that kind of thing taps on the windows knocks on the door it's freaky it is freaky and and that kind of thing plays right to my like actual real life fears, <laughs> you know, that that thing that's lurking out in the dark, um, something at the edge of the woods, something tapping on your window, like that stuff, and like terrifies me in real life. So this majorly like made the hair stand up, you know, and I had to take a break and I had to make sure I read a lot of this during the daytime. Honestly, it, it was spooky for me. <laughs> 
some people it's not, I'm sure, but you know, we all have our own things that scare us, right? So that part, it was super scary. And then we learn about, of course, what's going on, what's out in the woods, um, all this kind of stuff, right? And like overall, the story was was great. Honestly, it was very, it was, you know, we had some suspense, the tension, like the scares, the characters were pretty interesting. Like you could feel, you know, the love between them and um, you cared about them, about what was going on and you wanted them to be safe, you know, <laughs> that kind of thing. Um, but there is um, a use of um, like Native American indigenous like lore and storytelling as a sort of really the main crux of this story. And that just personally left me feeling a little, hmm, I don't know, you know what I mean? I, there is a whole spiel in the back of the book where the author's like, okay, I, you know, I went back and forth about using, about doing this, you know, the tribe name that I made isn't made up, it's not real, there's nothing that I'm pulling from real, you know, Native American, you know, culture, and I went, you know, I did, should I do it, should I not, I went ahead and did it, I did it, and I did it in what I felt was a very respectful way, and he goes into the whole thing. And while I, I'll, I do agree, I mean, I think he did a great, you know, he did a decent job with I think being respectful and making the there are a couple of there are a few of um, indigenous characters in the book that are done well you know being authentic done well in a very respectful way. I still just I'm feeling a little uh, about did it even need to be there though? I feel like the story really could have done without it. this you know this thing that's in the woods could have had some other sort of supernatural you know history or lore to it all of its own and it did not need to really have a you know an indigenous connection and it would have been just as scary because the scares came from his other writing about how eerie it is outside and how it's like you know phase like a sleepwalker and a sleep talker and so that, that, how that connects to this, like I said, this sort of entity that's outside. Um, all that is scary. Like it didn't need this other layer really of, you know, the Native American stuff tie in. So yeah, I don't know. I, I still just kind of have mixed feelings about it all. Overall, like I said, it scared the crap out of me in several scenes. I really liked the story. Feeling it, feeling weird about the inclusion of Native American culture, even if it is made up. Just my two cents, of course. All right, so then I finished Stranded by Bracken McLeod. This was the book club pick for Rachel over the Shades of Orange, her Patreon book club. And this is, this was pretty good too. So I pulled this one up on audio. This follows a crew on a boat and they are, I forget exactly where they are now. They're up, up north a bit. <laughs> they are I think they're like trying they're like delivering things to like an oil rig i think that's what they're making where their what their purpose was i'm drawing a blank now for some reason sorry <laughs> anywho and all, all of a sudden uh this sort of like big fog rolls in and and damn if they're not stranded right the book the, book, the name of the book is stranded so they're all of a sudden it's just surrounded by ice which is not totally even though they're up north it's not like totally like <laughs> you know, um, normal for this area. It's gonna be some ice, but not like this, you know. And so they're stranded and they're figuring out like oh, what in the world's going on. Like they're all their equipment, so like their um, communication equipment, and satellite equipment to contact people, or it's it's kaput. And so they're like, oh gosh, what do we do? You know. And so basically, this starts this journey of like them trying to survive. And I don't want to say much more because it gets twisty turny and it's pretty good it's pretty good so um, there's definitely sort of a, a t twist of the tone here or not tone but yeah twist of a theme here and then the sort of middle-ish part that flips the story on its head and um, yeah gave you good food for thought and I don't say much more because it'll definitely spoil it um, but I enjoyed it the narrator for this was PJ Auckland who I didn't love. I'm gonna be honest, the narrator, he sounded, he reminded me of like a news anchor. 
Uh, if he did the characters really well, like he did some good, like there's a character with like a Boston accent, there's a character with a Southern accent, there's a one with like a French accent. Those sounded great, but this sort of general narration, he was very news anchor. <laughs> but it was fine to, um, to go through. It wasn't like, you know, the worst narration ever or anything, but... Um, so I don't want to say too much more because I don't, I mean, it's definitely, like, you can say too much about this and it will spoil it. But if you like a good, you know, survival type of horror story, especially set in cold weather, which for me, like, being stranded like cold weather is definitely kind of terrifying, <laughs> you know, because it's so cold and, ugh. yeah, it's, it's, it's scary. So yeah, that was pretty good. I dropped a book, so hold on. <laughs> so that's what I finished. I made um, I finished up some pretty some pretty good stuff this past this past week. So things I've got in progress. I did make the teensy start on my reread for this month, which is Slaughterhouse Five by Kurt Vonnegut. I hadn't read this in a million years, and so I'm excited to dig back into it. I'm already loving it. You know, you forget stuff that when, you, when it's been so long since you've read a book. You know, I can't remember. I did finish. Um, chapter five of House of Chains. We get, uh, we meet some characters from previous books finally. So I'm like, ooh, okay, yeah. Got some people that I know. So that was cool. I'm still making my way through Dracula. You know, we're, we've got about a third of, third of the way left to go on that one. I'm, I'm still enjoying just kind of chapter a day and I'm a little behind actually, but um, slowly making my way through it. It's it's fun. Uh, it's been fun going through it that way, and then chatting chatting about it. So I did pick up a new short story collection because I did after finishing see she said destroy by Nadia Bolkin. So I'm diving back into Midnight uh, from Beyond the Stars. This is an anthology of like sci-fi horror from Silver Shamrock. And um, yeah, there was the um, one story here. This one I just read. The last one, right? Embryo by Tim Curran. Ooh, that's a good story. Oh, it's so good. So I've enjoyed this so far. It's chunky, um, but story a day. I'm just kind of making my way through it, and it's been uh, it's been fun. And I know, I, I know, I, I know I said I wasn't going to buy any books for a little while. I know, because I've got, I mean, hundreds of books on my shelf that I've not read. I know, okay, I know. But this went on sale, and I bought it. <laughs> I've already read this, so, I mean, does it count if you've already read something? I don't think so. Um, and I... I'm really stoked to have this on my shelf so that I can dig through some of these stories again. I loved, I loved this collection. So I'm so excited to have a copy. And you know, for this one, you know, it was half off on sale and this completes my Haley Piper collection. And so I bought it. Vinnie Rose, The Cannibal King. It'll be the last story of hers that I've not read, or the last book of hers. So. Hyper collections complete. So I did pick up a couple of things, but you know, I'm still doing pretty good. I'm still doing pretty good. And I've, you know, I finished several books off my shelf, so get off my back. <laughs> okay. I'm kidding. So that's going to do it for me. That was my week. It was pretty busy. Lots of reading. It was a good week. I hope that you had a great week also. Let me know what you read this week. Did you finish anything good? Were you disappointed by anything? Let me know. And um, thanks as always for watching. I'm always so appreciative, appreciative of your time, your comments, your likes. I love it all. Thanks so much. I uh, will catch you in the next one. <laughs> Bye.